What's going on guys? This is part 5 of our Python control server and we have a lot to go through today so let's hop into the demo right away. I'm gonna run the server. You can see it already looks a lot different than before. We have a nice little screen here to display the clients and that is because today we are improving on having multiple clients connect to us. So let me go ahead and connect from a few different computers here so we can see how it's gonna look once we're done with the code and there you go you can see we're getting these messages letting us know that new clients are connecting I'm gonna go ahead and connect with another computer and you can see we're actually spawning new server threads for each client that's connecting so that is very good because it means we can let's say activate client number two here and we can send a few commands there we go we get a reply do a directory command now let's say we want to quit from this client go ahead and do a quit you can see they're still connected because they each have their own individual thread now let's activate the other client we'll send a few commands you can see this is a totally different computer we could do an IP config here to prove that. There we go. You can see the IP address and we can do a quit. And another uh, really cool thing I've added is the status. So if we do, uh, let's say we want to check on the status of the client, you can just do option number one and take a look at that it shows you the IP address of the client the port in which they connected to and one final interesting detail to have in mind is this is the port on our server thread so for each client connected we're spawning a listener on an individual port all right so you can see this one is on port 4421 this one is on port 4422 and yeah this is all the info about these clients and whenever you want to exit this screen you could do enter and you're gonna notice the clients are still connected let's say you want to terminate a client you can just go and do a exit command like that and once it updates here in a few seconds and we do the status again boom that clients gone and yeah that's basically what we're working on today now without further ado let's jump into the code because we got a good amount of stuff to look at I've also did some organizing on the scripts so let's pull it up here all right so here is the server uh, script you can see we're actually importing stuff from this encryption file here now what's going on and what is this interface well the script was getting rather big so what I went ahead and did is I decided to break it down into a few different files and that's for the sake of being easier to read alright so for example the interface is actually this script right here and you can see it's a very short script that has only like 40 lines of code and basically all it does is display the two screens for the main screen and for the status screen so this is basically our text user interface alright nothing too complicated it just goes through the list of clients goes through the list of sockets of course we gotta pass that as an argument since it's on a different script and yeah that's basically it and it helps a lot because we don't have to import every single library into these different scripts we can keep the imports more organized now if we take a look at the encryption you can see that this is the only script we're importing pi aes script now so that's really useful because we can have all the encryption stuff here like the encrypt data the decrypt data uh, encrypt file decrypt file all these functions we did on part 4 and of course the send data function and I put the send file function in here too 
So basically all this stuff is now segregated into the this specific script and both the server right encryption and the client are able to use from it so we can get rid of all that code and now the script look a lot more clean right like it's barely a hundred lines of code so let's hop back into the server script really quick though you can see we now have a lot of variables here these two were already in here the host and the port and now we have the port available which basically this will determine the available port for the server threads so every time a new client connects we need to figure out okay let's find the new port for this specific client and let's allocate it for him and basically all we're doing is adding plus one to the port determined uh, by the script here so if you were to change this it would just keep adding plus one and find an available port and now we also have a main server controller because our main server which is on port 4420 is uh, also a thread so whenever a client connects to it basically we listen for that client we send him the port for the new uh, location and then we immediately close it down and reopen that main server thread so this controls whether we should fire a new main server thread or if we can keep listening all right we have a count as well so we know how many times a new client has connected now these two are the lists of clients and sockets which i showed you in the status command very important to keep track of all the clients connected and have all their uh, sockets as well now the active variable basically this controls the active client that we are communicating with at that moment and this is the download mode because we are doing the download of files inside of the server threads we need to have a variable to control that all right and let's see any new functions Oh yeah, these two functions, we're using them to allocate the ports. So basically this function here will try to check if an available host and port is good. So it tries to bind to it really quick. If it does that successfully, we'll set it to true. And that means we have a good port. So a new client will be able to connect to this port and the allocate port basically will determine which port to put that client on right before we spawn the server thread so we'll keep trying ports 4421 if that one is already occupied we'll try 4422 if that one is also occupied we'll try 4423 and so on right and now the main server basically i just took the code for the main server and put it inside its own function this is basically it right here you can see we have a few uh, outputs to the screen telling us whenever a new client has connected and basically whenever a new client sends us the howdy message we just go ahead and spawn a new server thread allocate the new port and of course we have to send the new port for that client so that basically that's all that's taking place on the main server we just communicate the port and then we shut it down and await for the client inside a new server thread and of course we have the new server thread function which is kind of what i just explained we have to pass it a host and a port argument which will be the new port or host that we are going to receive that client and yeah this function is also pretty simple we just go ahead and add that information to the client list to the socket list and of course we have to bind into that new host and port that we've passed as an argument and then we print a nice little message to let us know a client has connected we'll go ahead and receive data if there's any issues we can kill the client or just exit the thread if you exit the thread it's just gonna finish that connection and yeah this block of code here uh, is the download mode so if we are receiving a file this is where that takes place 
which is the same code that was inside of the server script before. Otherwise, we're just gonna go ahead, decrypt the data and print it like usual. If we have any issues, we can just kill the client. And yeah, that's basically what the kill client function does as well. We just go ahead and check for the tuple or the socket. So we go into all the list of clients. If we find a client that matches, we're gonna go ahead and pop it out of the list. If we find a server, uh, a socket that matches, we also go ahead, shut down that socket and pop it out of the list as well. And yeah, you can see now the whole script is way more simple and I'd say easier to understand. This is the main loop. So we have less stuff in here now. But yeah, overall, I really like how it, uh, how it's looking right now. It's just very nice and neat and you can receive new clients over and over. They can exit and see, I just connected with another computer here and you can see that the ports are constantly being allocated. So basically they're gonna stay connected forever. You can activate a specific client, you can exit and yeah, overall the whole thing is just really smooth. All the commands I tried are still working properly. So if we do an upload here of an image, should work no problems. There we go. Now we can do a directory command to check for that. I'm also gonna go ahead and do the encrypt file, which we implemented last time. So let's do my password and the file will encrypt that image we just transferred. Boom. Working very smooth. There it is. Now we can even uh, try the download command like that. Let's give it a second here. There we go. Here we have that encrypted file we just downloaded. And yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hope you guys like this one. Check below to get the script downloaded, try it out, tell me what you think. And yeah, we got multiple clients working with the Pi AES crypt encryption and file transfers, a lot of good stuff. We're gonna have some more interesting parts coming up. But yeah, till then, I'll see you guys next.